don't take me like this. <laughs> so I just thought it was kind of cool. <laughs> the 90 90 rule. 90 90 90 rule. <laughs> I basically said 90% of all day traders lose 90% of the money 90% of the time. <laughs> Which is true though. You know, it, it's based upon my very limited knowledge of stocks back then. And so I see all these people, and then actually research came out this year or last year, and I was like, Oh my God, that was real. <laughs> so, so I made, we made this little meme. <laughs> you guys can see it says, uh, I just signed it. So this is a Tiger Woods progression, right? So he spiraled downhill, right? And so he signed up with the Guru service. He, he made his first trade, and now it's like, oh crap, he just sold all the money. <laughs> and now his credit card bills are due. But this is you guys now, yeah. <laughs> Hours, my most profitable hour. Yeah. You know, no coincidence there. It's, 
Yeah, that's it's funny. Good. I used to I used to call it correction time. And they're like labeling it zombie, and I like yeah. it zombie better because we got the emoji for it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so like emoji time. So see, see, this is great. You see the difference in personality. You like Doctor Spock. I <laughs> 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 like Kirk. Yeah. <laughs> so he tracked it. So that, that's the thing. Everybody's different, right, guys? So however you get there. So for me, I, the way I correct is I'm a very emotional guy. That's what my downfall is. Seriously. Right? Yeah. Personality is a very important thing to determine how you can get over obstacles, right? So I, I call him the Dr. Spock guy. Because uh, he's very analytical, he tracks all this stuff where I'm, I'm an emotional guy, right? And so everybody has different. So I'll, I'll let Alex have the lessons. I think Alex is in the middle. He's, he's in the middle. So for me, I'm emotional. I know that I can make money. I just need to control my temper, uh, my FOMO, all this stuff. Revenge training, remember I, I talked about that? So the way I do is I get back to basics. And I think this is what everybody needs to do. Because uh, get back to basics. It's a, training is a lot about confidence. When you're training well, you, dude, you're in the groove, right? You're chilling. But how fast do you get back to basics? Like when right away. So we'll start more, right? Like, I mean, I lose all the time, right? I've been losing a lot more than like recently because I'm trying to adjust to using more size, which entails a learning curve, which entails losses. So how do I get over it? Uh, that's why I do those walks all the time, right? So I learned from Val is that you need to have a clear head to kind of be continued to trade well. So, dude, the worst thing in the world is a loss, right? And if, like, I don't eat well after it. Like, I feel like I shouldn't be doing anything. I sit at home, like I don't go out. I feel like I need to punish myself in order to feel that way so that I don't feel it ever again. So how do I kind of fix that, right? That's why I do the walks. That's why I kind of do the recap. So what ends up happening is this. The thing that Bao always says, which is true, is you need that one green day after. It doesn't matter if it's a dollar, it doesn't matter if it's a hundred dollars, it doesn't matter if it's ten thousand dollars. You need that one green day after because it's all about confidence, right? It's all about trusting your system and trusting your process. Uh, what's your approach to anticipation versus confirmation? And there we go. This is very good. <laughs> yeah. This. How do you use it, and what do you recommend to traders? Okay, so the thing for me is that anytime I see opportunity, I want to capitalize. Like this, for me, the worst thing in the world is to miss opportunity. So anytime oh, I see, <laughs> well, yeah, oh, exactly, exactly. So anytime I see an opportunity out there, I want to be able to capitalize as much as possible. So that sometimes means that I get in there too early because I have conviction on setup. I've made money on that setup before. But the reality is, I shouldn't be using that monster size until. It confirms because I'm trying to anticipate it right now. I'm saying that this setup has worked in the past X amount of times. It has shown me that it's a piece of shit stock. It does exactly fits my criteria for what it is. But until it breaks down that line, whether it's three dollars or whatever it's that line, and doesn't come back from it, that is the conviction part. Whereas if you're waiting for it, if you're shorting size at 350, you're anticipating it to go down. So the key is to never anticipate it with size. Always wait for confirmation to size in. And that's been an issue that I've been having lately. Is I've been getting in too early because I am too convicted in stuff. Uh, you're anticipating. Yeah, exactly. So this comes out of this. I, I, you can think about this. So imagine you see blackjack, right? You got two cards. You see the first card being a king. You're like, so that's anticipation. You're like, fuck, I'm a king. I'm fucking all in. Then a fucking six comes out. Fuck, that's not confirmation. That's the difference between. <laughs> Anticipation and confirmation. I want to wait two cards to show themselves before I anticipate. Even if it means that I'm betting half the size. So if you've got a situation where if you anticipate and you make two times more, but you can lose all your fucking money, or play it more safe and make half the money, you see what I'm saying? 